have you ever had any like misunderstandings that you try to like reach out? Like for example, I was asked directly with the uh, the Danny Lake situation, right? It was a it, no. You this didn't, is the answer to your question. You didn't reach out like I mean, I I tried to text her. It was green. So. But right there, that that yeah. right there though, and I feel like those things behind closed doors, and, like the, I don't need to prove anything to social media. I have mm, her number, you right. know. So I was like. But, I mean, we never talked off, you know, outside of this. No, we did not. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's popping? You know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J. Hill is here. J. Hill Podcast. Listen, God is good, man. I'm going to tell y'all this, man. Special guest in the building. I mean, superstar status. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> B. Simone is here. What's up? Yeah. You know what's funny? Dang, I thought I was going to have a better intro than that. For real? <laughs> I, could, I mean, we could, we, could, we could run it down. I mean, I already... It's like know. entrepreneur, Ent CEO, stand-up comedian, millennial Ooh. queen of comedy, billionaire B, the manifest queen. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. You, damn. My bad. I, I did you a disservice. That was terrible. <laughs> no, it's okay. You just snapped on that. Like, damn, sheesh. I'm just manifesting, you know? Billionaire B, like... I mean... It's gonna happen. Yo, you've been manifesting for forever. I know. And, and everything I coming. manifest happens. Every single thing. Every. The what lip gloss, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, someone beauty. I mean, we like. We should give your people a promo code. What can it be? Let's do it. J20. J-A-Y-2-0. Go to bsimonebeauty.com and get 20% off. Ooh. <laughs> you heard that. Bsimone said it first right here. J20. Y'all don't let me forget that because I got to make the promo code. <laughs> All right, bet. No, I, um, yo, you, I don't even, it's, it, it's so many places we can start, bro. You started out out your car. Yeah. Years ago. Yep. Look at you yeah. now. The car I drove from Dallas, Texas. I'm from Dallas, Texas. And I drove down to Atlanta. My homegirl back, um, she moved first. Shout out to Pharaoh. That's my girl, my baby. One of my best friends. She moved first. She was like, basically, like, if you don't move, I'm not going to be your friend no more. Like, you're holding yourself back. You're being stagnant. You're being scared. I'm about to elevate with my life. I'm moving out the city. If you don't move, I don't even want to talk to you no more. I was like, so she, like, pushed me, you know, to move, so. I don't know if you had this experience, but I feel like when you move and people see a lot of people flourishing in a specific place. Now, we can get more specific specific than that. I feel like a lot of people back home be talking shit about everybody want to move to Atlanta yeah. and think they're going to do something. It's yeah. like, uh... No, nah, we actually moved to Atlanta and, and are doing, and yeah, we're doing and something. We are doing <laughs> like, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy how people like really try to downplay yeah. everything yeah. nowadays. That's crazy. Yeah. And now, I mean, this was almost a decade ago. So now, obviously, in the past ten years, things have really, really changed. Mm -hmm. Like, you can pop off in Iowa, Idaho, whatever. Like now, you, we're building our like this setup, this beautiful setup y'all have. You could do this in Utah. No, you like, can. You get what I'm For saying? Sure. Like, you can. The iPhone, social media is like so big right now that you can. Do it anywhere, but of course you want to be around like-minded people that are, you know, when you change your environment, it changes your idea of what is mm. possible. Yo, and it's crazy because, like you said, when you change the environment, you see new things. Yeah. So you understand that yeah. this can happen. Yeah. Like, sometimes you're not in those environments, so it's not that you, you're you downplaying yourself or you, you don't have faith in yourself, yeah. but you don't even know it you exists. You don't know it exists. <laughs> so it's like... Yeah, when you see or you walk into a mansion or you see a house or you hop on a jet or you see it's possible, exactly. so now you don't want anything other than that. Exactly. Now you could be like, yo, I want this. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's crazy. But, yo, I, I, I wanted to bring that up because... <laughs> You starting in your car. Do you do you still have those moments of like, bro, look at this shit? All the time. All the time. But I feel so aligned. Like, we could probably talk about relationships nah, nah, later. Nah, nah, let's go. But, we can talk about all that. Um, you know, obviously my brand, you're my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, this black girl always looking for a man. Like, that's in my comedy. Now I've just kind of ran with it. Not mm -hmm. that it's always true in my life, but I kind of ran with that. But I feel so fulfilled in my life, in my career right now. 
that I'm just like so aligned with what I'm doing. My platonic relationships, Megan, she was supposed mm. to be here today, but she couldn't make it. But um, per- public service announcement. Yeah, they know. <laughs> PSA, Megan, Megan is fucking fire. She's bro. so special, bro. She's special, She's so bro. Special. And if I can, since we on this platform, I want to show love to my uh, guy Alexander the Blanc. Yeah. I don't know. They remind me of each other so much. They so aligned. Yeah. And just spirituality with yeah. God. Oh yeah. my God, bro. Yeah. They are so special. But yeah, I'm sorry, she's bro. so special, but. I said said that to say, like, my relationship with her, it's a business relationship, but we've been best friends for 20 years. Mm. It's a platonic relationship. So my platonic relationship, my career, my purpose, I feel so fulfilled in that, that it's like, yeah, like, I'm doing what God wants me to do. This is supposed to be my life. I deserve this. This Mm. is what God called me to do. I don't ever feel like I'm not worthy of the things I have or... Mm oh, this was just luck, or I worked super hard. Like, God, yes, you have to work hard. Don't get me wrong. You have to work hard and be diligent. But also, God has a plan for your life. So if you listen to him, everything will unfold the way it's supposed to. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Is it, for me, is (laughs) low-key scary? Did you ever think about it like that or no? Yeah. Like, being so alive. Like, I've never felt like this before. Yeah, ever. So feeling like this is like, oh, shit. Yeah. But it's lit. It's exciting. It's like you finally feel like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. I'm walking on the right path. This is why God has me here for this. And it changes each chapter. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, do you have kids? Yeah. Okay, so once you had kids, it's like, okay, a part of your purpose was to be a father. Mm -hmm. Before you had kids, that wasn't a part of your purpose. So your purpose changes in each chapter of your life. If you get married, now it's your Yeah, I have a girlfriend of five years. Oh, Um, dope, dope. So I have a stepdaughter. I call her my daughter, though. Like, I don't really. That's beautiful. Yeah, so that's my daughter, daughter. But, like, just even in that, right? Just understanding. And, like you said, it changed, right? So I remember when I first came into her life, my daughter. I really didn't know how to approach it because, like, it's a girl. Yeah. She's eight. I'm yeah. Like, I'm trying to be respectful. She was eight when you met her? Yeah. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. She's 13 now. And it's like, ah, I don't know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, that's dope. But now it's like, I remember having a conversation with my girl and she was saying, I don't know exactly how what she said, but she was just saying, like, um, you know, if you were her father, right, her biological father, certain things you wouldn't say. Mm. And I had to check myself, like, damn. Mm. Because let's be real, since we're here, fuck it. Transparency is yeah. a safe space. So, yeah. you know, I would say like, yo, I'm here. That should be good enough. Or, oh, I'm, um, yeah. bro, if I didn't care, I wouldn't yeah. be doing this. And yeah. she like, if that was your biological child, you, you wouldn't put even think th- like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you feel me? And yeah. I'm like, damn, but that goes to purpose. Now I understand the space that I'm in. And like, bro, you, you can't be saying these things like yeah. that. Because if, if you're going to treat it like your daughter, treat it like your yeah. daughter. Yeah, good for you. That comes with maturity. Mm, mm, like, mm, if you're mm. going to be in her life, be in her life. Exactly. Don't have one foot in, one foot out. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, and I say purpose is like, I don't want to say scary, but it give me anxiety. Not even anxiety. It's scary because I always had anxiety. Okay. We always push yeah. for something else, yeah. right? Like yeah. I feel like as creatives, yeah. you can understand this. Like we yeah. pushing for the next big thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm not really doing that right now. You feel complacent? You feel st- kind of stagnant? I feel content, and mm. I feel like a lot of times we use that as a negative, a negative term. But it's like, bro, knock on wood. Yeah. If it was to stop today, bro, I feel like I fulfilled a purpose that God wanted me to fulfill. Yeah, I feel for so sure. good. I've for never sure. like. And that's why I say it's weird because I don't want to feel like this, but I feel like it's good. Yeah, but as humans, we always, it is, I get what you're saying, like feeling like you're happy. But as humans, you always want, it's just a natural thing. You always want more. No, for sure. You have one, you want two. You Mm -hmm. have two, you want three. You have a mansion, you want more real estate. You have $100, you want $1,000. You got $1,000, I want 10 bands. I got 10 bands, now I want to hit my first 100K. Mm -hmm. So even, I think that's. Even with your purpose, too. Like, I've done this. Okay, it's time to do this. It's time to do that. I feel like every day you wake up, it's a chance and an opportunity to push harder. Whether it's with your spirituality, whether it's with your mindset, whether it's with learning something. Like, you should not be where you are in 10 years where you're at today. Mm, so, I do, I do understand what you're saying. Like, I think that's gratefulness, though. Ex- that's what it is. That's what it is. Because I, I know I'm not going to be here to me. Yeah, like, I, for sure. Don't get it messed up. You feel for me? For sure. Like... This, yeah. you know, you're in this space now. Ten years, you're gonna have your own podcast Facts. studio. You're gonna be, you know, it's like it's always more to do. So I think what you're feeling is more not complacency or comfortability. I think you're just grateful. I'm just happy. Yeah, bro. you're grateful. Oh so my God. Like and that's, that's a good I, place to be. And that's what I want to talk to you about because I just I just somebody of your magnitude, I was telling Jess Lardy the same thing. I feel like it's so easy to downplay our celebrity, mm-hmm. right? It's so easy to be mm-hmm. around people when they, they used to us and they're like, oh, yeah. that's just B or that's just, yeah. that's just J. And it's like, yeah. nah. I do that. <laughs> like, Megan be getting on my ass. I like, be out in Walmart, wig off, 
crazy barking ass Yorkie, my puppy, like just walking through Target or whatever. And I'd be like, she'd be like, bro, like that's at the end of the day, it's not safe. Number one, like I'm like, oh, nobody want nothing for me. You know, like, I ain't got, it ain't like I'm walking around. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel unsafe, but she's also like, you just, that's not normal. Like, you need to be careful. You need to, you know, don't be posting where you are all the time. And mm. I, I'm I'm kind of getting used to that because I look at myself as Braylon, not mm. B. Simone, you know. And that's what a thing, like, you are Braylon, but you are B. Simone. I know, bro. You I are know. hard to get I know, Yo, it's, I know, I know. It's both. Listen. I, I tell people all the time, even to the smaller people, like, people are, bro, you're a superstar. Yeah. And I'm going to treat it like that. Yeah. I tell people all the time, yeah. like, bro, I don't, bro, man, she, you pulled up on me, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And that means a lot. I wanted to do you it. You feel me? A lot of people, they take that shit for granted yeah. and be like, because, oh, that's just, nah. Yeah. Like, yeah. you feel me? But you uh, say something about, like, you wake up every day, you have a chance to, like, to keep Keep going forward, keep growing, right? Keep growing, keep growing, yeah. I have that tattoo on my chest. It's, it's life and chance with oh, a cross. Dope, and it says, dope. as long as you have life, you have a chance to do whatever you want in Every life. Every single day, yeah. As long as you got like air in your breath. wake up and they already gave up. Like, I'm too old for this or I don't know my... Per-. Every day you wake up is an opportunity to find it. Seeking you will find. You have to seek it, though. Mm. Like, everything that I sought for and, you know was on a mission to find, I found. Mm. Whether it was financial gain, whether it was French, healthy friendships, whether it was God. Like, I've never been so close to God than I am now, you mm. know? So those are things that I, I was looking for, though. You have to look for it, you know? So every day is an opportunity to find those things. God is good. Yo, we got B. Simone in this building, in the yeah. building, man. Can I was we, just uh, about to say, Let's celebrate, like, man. We got B. Simone here, Y'all got the, the orange juice. Y'all yeah. supposed to make a mimosa. Oh, oh, my God. God. Did it spill? It did, but... You know, oh, Lord. It'll dry up. It'll dry up. That's, it'll yeah, that's up. why it's we got clear, carpets. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> At least it wasn't like spilling red wine or something. Facts. Nah. It might It might smell a little better in here with the, the champagne, I guess. I don't know. It's probably Man. a terrible take. You got to oh, pour your own poison, juice. though. Okay, I'll pour mine. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. I don't want nobody to be like... Jeez. See, let me tell y'all how to make the perfect mimosa. I ain't like Megan, so it ain't going to be no mixing with Meg, because y'all know Is Meg like be this? making the bomb drink. No, that's it. <laughs> That's it. You put the champagne all the way to the top. All the way. Making Let the bubbles the spit out. I'm pouring. For those that are just listening, I'm pouring. You hear those bubbles? ASMR. Hold on. Listen to the bubbles. Boom. Now, I have a regular glass, okay? It's filled all the way to the top. I'm going to take my orange juice. And this is how you make the perfect mimosa. That's it. That's the mimosa. Mimosa by B. Simone. Let me taste it. Let's see what it tastes like. It's given brunch in L.A. rooftop. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Yo. So listen, man. Um, so good. From there, what when you have those moments of like, mm-hmm. damn, I'm here, what do you think about? I live in it. I Like you said, I have grateful moments where mm-hmm. I just thank you, God. Sometimes when I pray, that's all I say. Just mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. I feel like the great, more grateful you are, the more you'll, you'll get. You know, God loves a grateful heart. But being grateful, and I'm not going to lie, I, I'm getting better at not always jumping to what's next and enjoying the moment. Because mm. I accomplished one thing, and I'm like, okay, great. We made a million. How do we make 10? We made 10. How do we make 100? Or, and it's not even about finance, like the financial gain. I know I'm going to be a billionaire. I claim that. I receive that. I know that. The first black, there's so much I want to do. I was, I'm, I'm not going to say that verbally, though. But Say it. Well, yeah. I, 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 Manifestation, I don't, say I know. It. I don't want to put it out yet. But I will you be so- the first to do a lot of things. The first black millennial stand-up comedian, actress, CEO, entrepreneur, production com- like billionaire all in one. I know I'm going to do that. But, um, yeah, I-, I have to be more conscious of not rushing to the next goal. Mm. Like, living in the moment. I appreciate it. I'm grateful. But I'm always like, I want more. I want to learn more. Not Like I said, not just with finances, whether it's my spirituality, mm. whether it's um, – learning more, understanding more. Like, it's not just about money, but I need to live in the moment and enjoy it. You know, not rush to the next idea of success. Can we be real? Doesn't, like, I feel like social media make it so hard to live in a moment. 
No, maybe not for you. I can't be real. Social media makes it hard for a lot of things. That's I wouldn't say fact. live in the moment. That's one of the things that make it hard for it, though. I think what's hard to live in the moment is when you're in the moment and you're with people and you're doing things you really don't fuck with. Like what? Like. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, Right. They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. When I'm in the moment, I'm not on my phone. Because I'm truly enjoying the company. I, it's okay. not, I'm not doing it intentionally. Okay. I just truly love the conversation. I truly am consumed in the company I'm around. I truly am excited to be in the environment I'm in. So I'm not on my phone. When I'm on my phone, I'm not truly in the moment. Okay. So if I'm, like, most of my best times have not been captured on camera. Mm. I have to be super intentional about that sometime. Like, when you're truly in the moment, you're not on social media. Mm. So I think people are showing a lot of things because they're truly not happy and not content with their their environment. It's a facade you know what almost, right? It is. It's a show. It it's, is. You know. It's to make everybody else think, I'm okay. Look, I have money. Look, I'm okay. Look, I'm happy. I'm not depressed. I'm not popping pills. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not getting my ass beat by my significant other. I'm not... You know, like all of these things that you're truly going through, you're showing your highlight reel because you want everybody else to think you're okay. You're vulnerable, right? You're transparent. Can we can we get into it? Yeah. Let's get into it. You know what else it is? It's a coping mechanism too. Yeah. Because a lot of times is. when you are it going is. through something, it is. you want to put up, that's like a roadblock so people don't go diving deeper into yeah. your life, right? It's like, oh, they're doing good. Yeah. You know how they say don't, people need to start checking on that strong friend? Yeah. You put up this this wall, this fake facade yeah. of being that strong friend that you don't need yeah. no help, so people won't even. And it feels good when you get likes and you get hard eyes under. At, we're human, like mm -hmm. that is feeding your ego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if I post a bomb ass picture and I know it's gonna do good, it feels good to get attention. Mm -hmm. That's my flesh. That's my human part of me. Yes, it feels good for people to be like, "You look bomb as fuck. You're so pretty. You're so funny." You da da da. -da. It that feels good. It increases. What is the chemical? Dopamine. Yeah. It increases that. Mm -hmm. So it feels good to be on social media and get, and, and that's where you got to be careful. Like, you have to kill your flesh. I, I have to do that. I'm a human. Kill the ego. Kill the pride. Kill the flesh every day. And, and you know, it's the hard part about it, right, is one, recognizing that, that it's an issue. Yeah, right? yeah. That's and the hardest part. Exactly. Realizing you have an addiction. And then secondly, <laughs> being intentional about it. Yeah. Right? So sometimes you got to do things to be intentional. You know what? Like you said, if I'm in, in a moment, I'm going to put my phone down intentionally not be on my yeah. phone. Right, that's something and I'm doing. And then I do that, and then I'm like, did it? And then I pick it up, and then like, it's it's literally an addiction. But it's like I'm admitting it, y'all. I'm addicted I'm to just, the iPhone, and I'm 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 aware, and I'm trying to. But that's okay. I feel like, but as long as we can be attention, even if you pick it up, right? Just say, hey, you said you won't put it down. Now hold yourself yeah. accountable. Yeah, put it back down. You get what I'm saying? I yeah, feel like have a lot the of intent. Yeah, focus. A lot of times, people have so many excuses that they allow the bad behavior to to keep going. Yeah, right. That goes into relationships. Yeah, that goes into work yeah. and all of that. But. Whatever. Um, I wanted to go back to comedy, right? Mm -hmm. Or you just starting. Mm -hmm. I remember, was it like five years ago, maybe? No, not five. Probably like four or three years ago. I interviewed you and Desi in my living room. You oh, had my just, God. Yeah. You had just That's started crazy. doing stand-up comedy. That's wild, comedy. yeah. From then to now, what are some of the things that you learned or that, that you can look back and say, damn, like I, like, I can't believe... This is the life. We're still on I Can't Believe yeah. that those these wild moments. We're still here. I always say this, and this is like my biggest thing, obviously, like the cliche shit, never give up. Keep going. Be yourself. Like the older you get, you realize that is literally just it. Like the, never give up. <laughs> Be yourself. Keep going. Like it's that simple. But the um 
what I always say is what got me to this point was truly being myself. And mm. I learned that in stand-up. Like, when I first started stand-up, I always did, like, okay, got to do the white people joke, got to do the sex jokes, like, all the shit that you know is going to hit. Like, if I talk about this, if I talk about sucking dick, that's going to hit. Like, mm. it's funny. People can relate. Let me do the sex jokes. If I talk about white people, that's going to hit. But really being myself in my comedy. Now I talk about my sister. I talk about, I'm trying to talk. start talking about my mom, my relationship with my dad, my Mexican stepmom, my sister being a shipper, my dad being a pastor. Like, incorporating my truth into my stand-up has really allowed me to enjoy that journey more. You still got that Mexican boyfriend? Mexican? He was, like, Hispanic. He was helping <laughs> you move and shit, No. <laughs> <laughs> now he's How do you know about that? Come on, bro. First of all, he's not my boyfriend. Okay, so let me say y'all. <laughs> so, I have movers. I just bought a condo in February, which is about to be a year now, and it is still under renovations. Y'all, renovating a place is the most stressful thing I have ever done. Oh, my God. I'm mm. li- literally living in chaos. But my movers, um, one guy, he brought, like, his team, and they didn't know Spanish. So I really want to learn Spanish. My stepmom is Mexican. I knew Spanish, and I'm from Texas. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, that's right on the border. Like, they didn't know Texas, English or they didn't know Spanish? The movers? Yeah. They didn't know uh, English. Okay. I'm sorry. No, you guys I'm sorry. Fine. They didn't know English. So um, I, I really have been wanting to learn Spanish lately, and that was, like, my confirmation because I was like, dang, he kind of fine. Like, he moving in boxes. You know, when you ladies, when you see a man, like, doing labor, it's like, that's sexy. So he was just picking up boxes and sweating. I was like, you know? Mm. And... Ooh. Okay. You know? Uh, no, okay. I, I don't know, but I'm trying to find... Okay. Okay. I'm so, listening. I was like, what's your name? Like, we started talking or whatever. Obviously, he... Like, Spanglish. He's speaking broken English, and I'm mm-hmm. speaking broken Spanish, because I know a little bit of Spanish. But I'm like... I'm about to, not, I, Hola, como esta? Muy bien, y tú? Bien. <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> well, go ahead. You okay. To... That's about all I know. <laughs> I know a little it. bit. Um, like, necesita ayuda. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, tú. ¿Dónde está? Like, little stuff. But, so I'm like, let me just get his number so I can learn Spanish. I'm not about to mess with this dude. Like, talk to him, talk to him. But I do, my sister, she fell in love with a guy that only knew Spanish and she only knew English. And they dated for years and moved in together. And he did not know English at all. You want to know something sick? They fell in love. You know what's sick? What? My friend, right? He met this girl on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. And he flew her out. But the she whole didn't know t- English? No, she didn't know no English. But the whole time he's speaking to her, he usually go- Google Translate. So she think he's Spanish. He don't know Spanish at all. Well, obviously, when you meet the bitch, you're going to be like, hey, bitch, what's up? I don't know Spanish. <laughs> but that's crazy. But that's how we talk. We talk through Google Translate. I'm really trying to learn Spanish. So y'all ain't going on no dates yet? No. I thought that was a real thing. I mean, he wants to make me sushi. He cooks. Mm. I'm like... In a world full of guys that probably just want to, like, buy you cars and houses and shit, that's that got to be, like, romantic, no? No, it's beautiful, but it's, like, also the language barrier is frustrating. Okay, because I feel like nowadays, I, niggas <laughs> is different. Like, I couldn't be single because niggas is setting the bar. The first thing I said to him was, what is your purpose? Because I know it ain't moving boxes. And I was like, I, relax, me. Like, no, then you need to have your own moving Man. boxes company. Okay. We're not just going to be moving boxes forever. Okay. We're going to own the company. What if he wanted to move boxes forever? He doesn't want to. But what if he did? He doesn't. He, that's not your type of guy. I mean, we had you had that conversation. No. You don't fuck with workers. What? I fuck with you walking in your purpose. <laughs> if your purpose is to rake up leaves and you feel like that is what God told you to do, I fuck with that. If your purpose is to sell a mixtape out of your trunk and you truly believe God told you to do that, I support that. My problem is people chasing money places, people, and things, and not chasing the reason why God put them on this earth. Mm. So when you figure that out, I can fuck with you. Mm. My last boyfriend didn't have no money. <laughs> I, I invested in him. I'm, I'm like, what do you want to do? Like, you, you I'm not going to say no money, but I definitely had more money than him. Mm. I was investing in him. It ain't about money. It's about what do you want to do as a man that is going to lead me and lead this household? I need you to know your purpose, and I need you to walk in it. Be real. Be honest with me, though. If he don't make no money, just being honest, transparent conversation. Yeah. If if he's not making money, he's not able to, I don't know, provide for yeah, you. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. As a woman, do you lose respect to him a little bit? Be honest. I didn't with my ex, no. Mm. I'm telling you, the way I am, if you are focused on a goal and you have an aspiration and you truly know what you want to do in life, which I feel like my ex didn't, mm-hmm. that is attractive to me. I can I can walk that walk with you if you truly believe this is how you're aligned and this is what you want to do. I think most people don't know their purpose. 
that is important to me. A man without a purpose is lost to me. And mm-hmm. you can't lead your household and you'll never be fulfilled as a man. You're supposed to protect and provide. If you can't provide, I've already taken half of what you're supposed to do away. Mm. So I think a man does feel fulfilled when he is the protector and the provider. But to provide, I don't just need you to be a billionaire. There's billionaires mm. committing suicide, baby. That's a fact. <laughs> like, I don't need you to have a jet. There's people that have jets that are miserable. That's a fact. I need you to be walking in your purpose so you are fulfilled internally. Mm. I can support that. Mm. And it doesn't have to be financial, no. Damn. So what do you think, like, even in that, your next relationship, how, like, how does that look, right? Because... I will say this, what I'm learning about myself, and I'm I'm so happy I'm kind of doing self-reflection and and learning about myself while I'm single because I honestly don't, like, what do you look for in a man? I'm still trying to figure out what I truly want because everything mm. that I asked for in my last relationship, I got. And, mm. I, and I still was like, okay, well, he's missing this, missing that, missing this. What do I truly want in a man? I feel like... Um, and I talked about this with my relationship coach. I have a relationship coach. Shout out to Spicy Madi. She's helping me get my mind together. She's like my therapist. Um, if I really have to decide if I want to date a beta or an alpha man. Mm. And I feel like most men that I've been with are beta men. But I'm attracted to alpha men. Most men are beta men. What is that? That I've been with. with. Like just let you lead, I guess? Uh, yes. Like kind of like. But, but here's the thing. Most, the men that I've dated have been beta men, but they want to be alpha. I feel like I need to be with a beta man who is okay with being a beta. Does that make sense? This is your perspective, yeah. It makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a beta man, but you want to be an alpha man, you're going to be unhappy. And me being an alpha woman is going to be a turnoff for you. But if you're a beta man and you truly don't mind your woman taking the lead, being the center of attention, making more money than you, then you're okay. I give you a different perspective. Yeah, I think this might sound crazy. Just follow me. I think what you're looking for is an alpha male, and what I why I say that is because a but, beta male. But and, that that's why I'm saying I don't know yet. I'm gonna tell I don't you, know. Just I'm gonna tell you yeah, my perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A beta male, right? Don't know how to let you take the lead. In my perspective, a beta male. No, don't know, that's. I'm not, gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. But that's not the definition of beta. All right, let me let me. Let me What's, Look, the, what's the definition? Let's, Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Before, before I get, I get my, canceled. Before, I mean, Let's look up the definition. Band, we ain't worried about getting canceled. Fuck these niggas. No, I, well, I, I ain't scared of these I know. Niggas. I'm being funny. Okay, I'm about to say, fuck them niggas. But. Have you been canceled yet? Nah. Okay. <laughs> but I, I feel like there's no... I feel like it's no... I feel like, it's, like it's, all right, well, I don't want to be canceled again. Okay, when, I already no, That's do not that true, time. though. I feel like you being canceled made you better. Yeah. It broke... Yep. Every dark... Time, sure we're gonna get to that. I was that's that's in my <laughs> wait. Arsenal. Let's look we up the definition. Let's of look it up. Let's look it up. Um, Jesus, this definition sucks. What does it, what does it say? <laughs> a man who is less desirable than an alpha male. Okay, so what I mean by when I say beta, right? I'm all about I'm big on confidence. So he's more passive, he's more um submissive. Okay, he's more pat like. Passive. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of an example. I understand what you're okay, trying okay, to say, okay, but okay, here's okay, my okay, perspective, okay, okay. right? This is why I think a beta male, I think you want an alpha male. This is why. I think I do too. I'm going to tell you That's why. What I'm but, saying, but, but I think because of my personality, I should probably try to date a beta. Hear me out though. Okay. A beta, right? When I think of beta male, I think of lacking confidence. This is my personal opinion, right? I think of somebody. But we can't go on opinion. We got to go on what is the definition of beta? So you said a beta is somebody who's passive. Right? Somebody who lets you take the lead. Yes. Right? For me, personally, I think you have to exude some type of confidence and be strong in your individuality to allow somebody to have that space, in my opinion. Okay. Right? I feel like when you're... We talk about this boss, uh, this boss, right? I feel like a boss is someone who understands his role and can take a step back. I feel like a lot of times when people try to coincide with yeah. that or they're not yeah. they're not okay with their position yeah. then they try to like we said social media right they want to post everything yeah. they want to they want to do everything in their power to show you that you're not who you are yeah. because I'm this person yeah. and and in my opinion an alpha is understanding that okay my wife makes might make might make more than me but that's okay cuz I'm good right yeah. that's that's just my yeah. opinion my wife but do you think a true alpha is okay with that that, but and I think that's what makes you an alpha. Being being mm. able to put your pride to the side, being so full in your masculinity mm. and being so full in your purpose and and shit and your your God desire that I'm a God fearing man. 
nobody can intimidate me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm with a woman and she's working her ass off. That's a good way to look at it. You get it. what I'm saying? I feel like alpha men, I don't know. And, and and a lot of times, I feel like that pride and ego thing is huge. But when you're living in your purpose and you're and it's bigger than us, right? Yeah, when you're yeah. living in a... Yo, what's popping? This episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. A social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10, you get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices. When you're following God, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's different. Like, yeah. I'm compl- But that's what I'm saying. You don't, that when a man knows his purpose, it's easier to date a man that knows his purpose. For sure. Have y'all ever read The Way of the Superior Man? Come on, bro. Don't play with me. You have? Yeah. It's such a good book. It is. I was just talking about it on my last podcast. Yeah. yeah. It's such a good book. I, yeah. I'm not even done with it, actually. I read it all the way through. I, I don't retain information well, so I'm reading it again and taking notes. But um, it's just a good perspective. It's actually for men, but I'm reading it to understand you know, more of more of a male's It's a it's a it's a great perspective. I think um Yes. But even going back in it, I think, you know, what happens is in these relationships, since we're here, I feel like a lot of times this is so important. It's a cliche, but we miss it. Mm-hmm. We overlook those red flags and that's super important. We overlook it because we like somebody. Mm-hmm. Right? So like we start we fall in lust with somebody. So now because I like you, I'm overlooking the things that I don't like. But what happens is if you be serious with somebody they're going to be the same person four or five years down the yeah, line than they, who they sure. were when, when you met them. For sure. And now you're but that's to... why I'm like, my next relationship, I have to be their friend first. I have never done that. Mm. I have always been like, I like you, you like me. Moving, it's lit. We're talking or we're dating or it's already a sexual connection there. So it's already a flirtation or I have never truly been platonic friends with a guy I've been intimate with first, like for a long period of time. The next guy I date, I am going to be his friend. And if I don't like you as my friend, I'm damn sure I ain't going to like you as my boyfriend you, um, or my husband. I actually was just talking about this the other day. These bangs. Fuck. Yeah, it's just like it. I actually was talking about this the other day, and you, and you sparked this conversation, though. I feel like... Let's, let's go there, right? You and Desi Banks. Mm-hmm. Never had. Y'all never did. It was strictly platonic the, yeah. this entire time, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all know each other for years. Mm-hmm. I feel like we should be more open... It's going to sound crazy, but we should be more open to giving our friends a try because it seems like a lot of times we have friends, really good friends, is is, is strictly platonic, we have nothing going on. It'd be like, if you look through everything, it seems like they'd be the best ones for us, Loki. Like a friend? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Like, but we never get those people a chance because they're yeah. just friends. Because you don't want to, like, be mean to your friend. Mm. You don't want to hurt your friend. Thanks. You don't want to break your friend's heart. So when you have a friendship first... It allows you to be more respectful to that person and not just like lusting over them. Right, but you say you want to your next. Yeah, the next partner, guy I talk to. They want to be a friend, but having having a friend because you have I don't know how many, but you I know we all know we can see mm-hmm. uh, Desi Banks, right? Mm-hmm. You have a friend that was strictly platonic and yeah, it was yeah, great yeah. relationships. Do you think you can build that with somebody and then go to take take the step to the next level though? Yeah, I think so. But that, but that also has shown me because of these male friends, there's certain things that because I'm your friend, I know I don't want to be with you. Okay. I've I've seen okay how you treat other women. I've seen your character. I've seen. I'm not sense. saying it's bad. No, no, I get it. I get but it. But I'm saying because I am so invested in our friendship, and I know you as a real friend, like real, fr- like farting in front of my homeboys. Right. Like you're my friend, nigga. Like don't touch me. Don't look at me. I know I don't want to be your girlfriend. Mm. You get what I'm saying? That that friendship allows you to know, is this somebody I could really be with or not? So, this conversation. You know what's crazy, though? I feel like they say ignorance is bliss. Yeah. I feel like not knowing something couldn't be attractive to somebody. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you do get to know somebody, your next boyfriend, whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's say you get to know him as yep. a friend. It's so many layers to us as humans yeah. that you could even be turned off by that. So it's like... Is that a is that a pro or a con? Right, being being somebody friend before you make them. No, uh, that's a pro. Let's not make it a con. Let's not make it a con. I just feel like it could <laughs> be if you. It depends because, like you said, your friends that you the friends that you have now that you have for long yeah. long periods of time, you know exactly why you don't want to be with them. Yeah, right. You've seen characteristics yeah. traits in them that yeah. you probably don't want in your man. Yeah, and some I actually could be like, he's a great guy. I would actually be with him. Mm. So would you try it with 
whoever that is? Oh, or is the friendship too strong? I attracted to him. Oh, shit. But, I mean, that can be fixed. I've had sex with ugly niggas. So, so <laughs> that being your friend, me. but but no, that being your friend, I right? And, 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 and I really like them, too. That being Ew. your friend and you, you respecting that friendship, is it worth trying to go to the next level? This person? Yeah. No. See? How do we know if that's going to be the same situation with the guy you meet that's your friend for years? We don't. Life is trial and error. Damn, life is crazy, man. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> All right, so I was we were talking about um, stand up comedy, right? You were just talking about uh, living in your purpose, right? Mm-hmm. We want on the tangent, but talking about being yourself. I feel like that's hard. Like you gotta stand be stand up. No, not even stand up. Like oh. you being yourself, right? You got oh. to this point by being yourself. I feel like you being yourself. It had to be some some sort of I don't give a fuck. Like you said, have you ever got canceled? I like no. You like you don't want to get canceled again. But it got to be a part in you to not give a fuck to be able to be yourself because being yourself. We make mistakes and we and we are flawed yeah, individuals. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It can't be the easiest thing to the do. The easiest just... way to be yourself is to love yourself. Mm. That's the easiest way. If I love me, I'm I'm not ashamed of anything. You know, and I think my mindset was like, if I say something about myself first, nobody can say it about me. Eat some on drive a Toyota. Boop. I already said it. My Toyota's on YouTube, bitch. Three hubcaps. What's up? You know, like, mm-hmm. I already said it. Be Simone this. Be Simone had an abortion. Boop. I already said it. Episode two on the Know For Sure podcast. We talk about my abortion. Like, I'm very vulnerable. I'm very open. And I'm, I love who I am. And that is a, that's a learned habit. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I look back on certain things I did in the past. I'm like, I didn't really love myself as much as I thought I did. Or, you know, you, you mature and you grow and your definition of love changes. That's a fact. But I think if you love yourself in each chapter of your life, it's easier to be yourself when you love you. Mm. So you have to focus on that. A lot of people are scared to be their self. Then you get, you got to figure out what the disconnect is. Why am I scared of this? Why You know, why don't I want to say certain things? Why am I scared to live in my truth? Mm. And also, it's like, why don't I want people to know this? Certain things, yes, certain things are private. Yes, certain things are private. But also, it's like, if you're ashamed of something and don't want people to know it, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Mm. <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? Yes, certain things are private. But other things, it's like, if you were embarrassed for this to get out, you probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Mm. So just look in the mirror and change the things about yourself that you don't like. If you can't change it, embrace it, you know? No. So I think it. it just starts with self love, yeah. I, f- I feel you like, and, and that's why I say I don't be scared to get canceled because like I know everything I say is with good intent, right? And if I say something that people misconstrue, mm-hmm. I'll have to deal with that. It just is what it mm-hmm. is. But I know who I am first. Mm-hmm. Like I have the love for myself. Mm-hmm. But that's why I was saying I know it got to be hard to be the superstar and being yourself because some things that you probably want to say, but he's like, man, I can't say that. What? Literally, I want to say so much, but I'm like Beyonce would never shut up. Like, Beyonce doesn't, you know, like, the greats, they, Jay-Z ain't on here Twitter fingering, like, is be quiet. People don't know you. You gonna argue with a stranger that has no idea who you are? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're really about to argue with a thousand comments, and not one person knows your, knows your heart. Not one person knows your spirit. Not one person knows your intent. You can't argue with somebody that doesn't know you or mm. that doesn't see you. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. I don't know. And yeah, like that cancellation shit broke my heart. Mm. When people question your character, and especially I'm a woman, I'm emotional, I'm sensitive, like that broke my which fucking one, though? heart. Which what? Which one? I feel like it was multiple times. Yeah, where, so which, all of them. The fuck? No, they was, all questioned my character. What was the one that <laughs> like, <laughs> What was the one that probably hurt the worst though? Um I mean all of them. I'm not going to be specific, but each one questioned my character. Is what I'm saying. It's not about which one, it's about why it hurt. Mm. It didn't hurt because oh, you're not funny, you're fat, you're not cute, cancel this bitch. That's stupid. I don't care. When you question my character, that is hurtful, especially when you spend your real life outside of social media trying to be a good person, trying to grow as a human, trying to kill your flesh every day, trying to you know, I have pure intent. So mm. when people question that, it's like, no, look at me. I'm a great person. Please, like, hands up, don't shoot. Wait, let me explain. Like, I felt very, very hurt. And, and and my fans and people trusted me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like when you lose that, people question your character. It's like that that was kind of like a jab. Like, it hurt my feelings, you know. So I, I when I say canceling, I don't care if people don't like me. That's not the the problem. The problem is questioning who I truly am. And that's always going to happen because people are never going to truly know. So how do you get to that next level? Because, like, even that, you said we talk about self-love. I feel like, who gives a... F- let me not... Let me be a little more empathetic with my words. Mm-hmm. Like, 
when we love ourselves, right, mm-hmm. does their opinion matter? Right? If you say they char- That's, question our character. Yeah, I said that. No. Right. It doesn't. So, but you ha- I'm a human. Mm. You have to train yourself to, to know that. You have to train yourself to be like, okay, I'm a good person. A thousand people don't know that. There's literally nothing I can do from it. There, mm. There's a there's an ignorance on social media that you have to train yourself not to be affected by. Mm. And how do you train yourself to, to, to be not Focus to be affected? on the truth. Focus on yourself. The mm. truth is my intent is pure. The truth is I didn't mean it like that. You took it the wrong way. The truth is God loves me. He could see my heart. The truth is it truly only matters what God thinks about me, not what humans think about me. The truth is... And I learned that from Megan. What is the truth? Mm. Focus on the truth. You know, so... Have you ever had any, like, misunderstandings that you tried to, like, reach out? Like, for example, I was asked directly with the uh, the Danny Lay situation, right? It was a... It, no. You is, didn't, is the answer to your question. You didn't reach out, like... I mean, I, I tried to text her. It was green. So. But right there. That, that yeah. right there, though. And I feel like those things... Behind it, closed doors. And, like, the, I don't need to prove anything to social media. I have mm, her number. You right. know, so I was like... But, I mean, we never talked off, you know, outside of this. No, we did not. You ain't, like, sent a DM? No. And I, I only ask that because, like, clearly, like... I've, I watch you grow, and I can see the... Sometimes you can just see the genuineness in somebody, yeah. right? I feel like I've seen the genuineness in you, right? Yeah. But like, even when like Danny Lay posted the uh, the shit, we're I, not gonna go deep into that right now. You don't want to go deep into that? I, it's, I don't. it's really about. Uh, but if I'm gonna talk about it, I'm gonna talk about it on my platform and monetize mm, over there. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. be very open. Like, so I ain't mad at that. We gonna talk about it. We are gonna get the clicks on no for sure. Because I haven't talked about it publicly. <sighs> Damn, you got really want to talk to you about that? <laughs> you can have it, shit. You can have this episode. You want to post it? Your, like, no, no. no. So. I don't really have much to say about it, though. So it's not about her, per se, right? It's mm-hmm. really about just, like, when you see when you see something in somebody, or, like, you, you see that you might have unintentionally did harm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't mean it. My question is really about you, right? It's really about, like, do you reach out and be like, yo, I see what you thought, but I promise you it wasn't yes, that. Yes, you talk to the person. I'm not talking to the fucking internet. Right. Yeah. But that's why I asked, did you DM? Because, I mean, like... I'm blocked. <laughs> Baby, oh, sheesh. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn. damn, sheesh. <laughs> like, uh, there's nothing else I can't. It's like I, there's nothing else I can do but let right. it ride. If we see each other, we talk. If we don't, you know. And that's really what I was asking. Because yeah. like, and, and, and those times again, again, it's it's different when an internet thing, and you have these blog sites. They like they beef everything up so it can be beef and shit like that. But it's like, bro. If you think, I don't know, I did something and I didn't, yeah. it's like, bro, I really, because I don't want you to even think I'm like that. You know what I'm saying? If you, if I, yeah. if, if, if I did anything that, that looks like that, I apologize and, I, and, and, and that, that wasn't my intent. That's yeah, really yeah, what yeah. I'm talking to yeah. about it, for real. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that's a character thing. If you truly care about the relationship and the person, you reach out to them privately. I don't have to reach out to anybody for the shade room to post it. No, like, not. it can all be handled behind closed doors because only the people that are involved know the truth. Mm. You know, so, Yeah. I think, and speaking of cancellations, right, I feel like every time, I know it was one time, I don't know if it was the 9 to 5 thing, but you you drop your, it's like you always bounce back crazy hard. Of course, I'm so resilient. So is that, is, it, is resilience, and is it is it part of a strategy? Like, I feel like when, when the 9 to 5 thing, I'm not sure you could correct me if I'm wrong, this is a safe space, mm-hmm. to, if I say anything, you could just correct me and I won't mm-hmm. feel the way. I feel like you came with a lip gloss, like, right after a cancellation or some shit like that, and it's like, damn, this girl is... Fire. No, I dropped I dropped my lip gloss years before um that happened. Which which one you talking about? I'm talking about uh which one you talking about? You said after the I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the nine to five thing. Yeah, People yeah. People slam you for that. Yeah. You dropped your lip gloss way before that. Years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because yeah. I feel like it was it was something that happened, and then you dropped your lip gloss, and people were just loving you again. I feel like you got a way of like. No, <laughs> I'm like people still in the comments talking about that. I'm like that was 2020. Jesus Christ, I done gave back to co- <laughs> post that post the charity I'm giving to bitch. They don't uh, ever do that though. I know, but they, they're um, never going to do that. Right. So that's the media. Facts. You know what we talking about? Like it, the, I've been like when I see stuff on headlines, I'm like. I have no idea. What do you think about this? I don't fucking know. I wasn't there. Mm. I don't know if it happened or not. Maybe, like, the media is going to paint a picture of whatever they want about any person. And you don't really understand until you're in that situation. Mm, Like, mm -mm. you want to be like, this is a lie. This is not true. But it's the media. That's their job. You know what's crazy, though? I feel like it's always going to be hard for people like you. And I say people like you, like, you are one of the ones that's opening doors. Yeah. Right? So, like, think about it. Like, Gilly and Wallow just got $100 million. Mm -hmm. That's... 
the floor now. Like that's mm-hmm. the expectation now mm-hmm. for podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. So you gonna have to take that hit. But now when it when it comes to other creators, like even myself, right? I understand not being thought, mm-hmm. but a smart man don't have to go through everything that a smart man don't have to go through what you went through. I can learn from your mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. So watching you go through it, watching the, the the celebrities go through it, now I understand that if it comes, it's no point in me trying to defend myself because I have the proof, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I ha- yeah. And I learned from it. So yeah. I think it might have been hard yeah. for you, but it really was but a just blessing. Just be quiet. Be graceful and be quiet, you know? You had, a, um, I wanted to talk to you about this. You was hurt from your abortion, right? And I seen like, you, y'all yeah. cried about that. Yeah. Going through that, and I think it's like a, this law about like um, banning the abortions and mm-hmm. stuff like that. How do you feel about that? Like, do you think? I a hundred percent. I'm pro choice. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Nah. A hundred percent. I just, I ask that because like like having an abortion. Do you is that something that you regret? No. No. Okay. Not at all. All right. I don't regret my decision. I ask that because like I feel like I'm pro choice. I do feel like it should be like. We should add some things in it. Like, just as a man, right? I feel like... Like what? I feel like women have the right to have an abortion if they want to. Okay. What about me? Like, what if I What if I don't... What if I want to have a child, right? Like, what What about my... We both took... We both laid down. We both had unprotected you, sex. Yeah, your body doesn't have to go through... It's not your body, though, at the mm. end of the day. You know what I mean? This is still... It's still her body. It's her... It should be her decision. And I don't think men should make that... No, nah, for sure. Choice. I only ask that, and I'm, it's my first time having this conversation, and I'm trying to be uh, trying to be reserved as possible, but I do want to be transparent. I just feel like that hurts men, too. I feel like a lot of times men feelings get overlooked. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like like if what happens when, okay, a woman want to have an abortion, but a man don't, right? And it's like, damn, like that's a that's a sad situation for both parties, yeah. right? It's like, damn, that's fucked up. And I was asking you because you had an abortion. Yeah. And yeah. I, t- I told the person I didn't ask them. Damn. You know, it's, it's it's the woman's body. It should be her choice. No, for sure. I understand Final that. answer. No, I understand. <laughs> Man, I ain't mad at that shit. How, how could you be mad at that? Yo, what, what's what's going on with you in this in this moment right now? Like, just with everything going um, on. Stand up shows, movies. Um, Outside of that. Out of, oh, with what? Mentally, like like. I'm. I, what I, I said it earlier. I'm super fulfilled and happy right now. I'm walking in my purpose, and I'm the most fulfilled and closest to God I've ever been in my life. What's some of the things that's bothering you? Um, bothering me. That's a great question. Mm. What's the last thing that hurt you? Yeah, hurt your feelings. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I would say family stuff. Maybe not hurt my feelings, but things I need to mend there. You know. Like and I'm not gonna go into depth because I, I'm super vulnerable. But when you talk about family stuff, you have to protect them. Mm. I can't just. You don't have to say who. I mean. No, I understand. I'm gonna say what I want to say. Mm, right. Um. Being on a platform when you, uh, you know, when you're a celebrity and you talk about other people, you're also putting their life out there. Mm. So it's like you have to you have to tread lightly with putting people out that don't want to. They didn't ask for this. You know what I'm saying? So but I think family stuff like just mending that and being closer to my family. I my family are the people that I have built my village with over the years I, i'm not like super 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 close with my family and those are things that i feel like the more mature i get the more spiritual i get um i want to go back and fix or mm. heal and you know grow from that do you think that's hard absolutely it's so difficult it's so difficult you i mean it goes back to your upbringing to things you've been through and the older you get you realize like the adults that were in my life did their fucking best like i get it life is hard you know like you really realize like damn like Although certain things did hurt me, they did their best, mm. you know. So it's a lot of forgiveness. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of understanding, but that comes with maturity, you know. Me, the more I grow and the more I get closer to God and the more spiritual I become, the easier it will be to mend certain relationships. So really, it's not running back to fix the relationship; it's fixing me, mm. and God will do the rest. No, nah, facts. I think it's hard to like. The hardest part for me, because I'm feeling the same way. I feel like when we on a run, we're chasing these our dreams so much that we can almost yeah. forget about yeah. everybody that was there for us, yeah. right? Not even the fact that they, if they did anything like that. Yeah. I think, like I talk about this all the time. Like, I feel like me and my moms, like it hurt me because I love my moms, but I've been on my own for the for the majority of my life. Yeah, a lot of times when you out of sight, you out of mind, mm-hmm. right? So it's not mm-hmm. it's not that I, I'm not attached. I'm not attached to you. Intentionally, it's just I'm like so used to being. Her. Yeah, I'm used yeah, to being by yeah, myself, yeah, right? Yeah. So I can't really build that love. And I was yeah. wondering 
if it, is it something similar on your on your end? It's like, have you been? I mean, I don't see my family a lot. I, I mean, I actually go back multiple times a year to visit, like vacations and stuff. But of course, like, I do feel like I talked about this on my podcast. Like, I chose my purpose over my family. Mm, And mm, I don't mm. feel like that is wrong, but I also feel like now that I'm growing spiritually, it is my duty to, to, you know, mend certain things. You know, I think God would be proud of that and honor that, and he would love for that to happen. So, Mm. like I said, with me growing spiritually, I have to go back and fix a couple relationships. What's the best part about growing spiritually, you would say? Ooh, hearing God's voice, man. Like, just having... To me, when I hear God's voice, it's a peace about my decision. Sometimes Mm. you make decisions and you don't have peace about it. Like when I have peace and I I, I know that it's God talking to me. And the closer you are to God, the easier it is to hear him. It's like Mm. me and you are right here. But if you way down the hall, you're not close to me and you're yelling my name or you way down the street or you miles away, I'm not going to hear you. But if we're close, I'm going to hear you. It's the same thing with God. You know, the closer you are to him, the easier it is to hear his voice. And I just think... You know, I have a long way to go. I'm a, you know, I should be getting closer and closer and closer with my spirituality, but I'm the closest to him I've ever been. So that there's a peace that comes with that. So we talk about God so much, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like we use this interchangeably. God, spirituality. Uh-huh. But we don't use Christianity as much. It depends on, I mean, I'm not opposed to any religion. I grew up Baptist. I'm Christian. Mm-hmm. I believe in Jesus Christ. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But when I say God... I'm not bashing somebody that thinks Buddha is their God or they think Allah is their God or they think, see, this is where people get confused. You so focus on religion, focus on relationship, Mm. (laughs) like all these rules and regulations and religion and this and that have your own relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That is all he wants from you. I don't know much about other religions. I grew up Christian Mm -hmm. so that when I say God, I'm talking about Jesus Christ, God, my God, you know, that's my religion. But I say God broadly because I'm not just talking to Christians. Mm. I'm talking to whoever is watching this podcast that is looking into this camp. I'm looking right at you, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Buddhist, whether you're non-denominational, whether you're Christian, whoever your God is, I challenge you. And I hope that you can um, go on your own spiritual journey and have a relationship with with God. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not just talking to Christians. Mm. I guess I'm specifically talking to Christians because... I'm a, I grew up Christian, mm-hmm. right? So I can only speak of what mm-hmm. I know, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm one of the ones that say I'm more spiritual than religious, mm-hmm. right? But I I sometimes wonder is that a crutch? Is that an excuse, right? Because if we're going to be if we're going to be talking, I'm just mm-hmm. being vulnerable with myself, right? Mm-hmm. I just want to have the conversation. If we're going to talk about faith and we're going to talk about God, it's like we only talk about these things when it's more convenient to us as what humans. Do you, what do you mean? Like we love God. We talk about getting close to God, we talk about hearing, mm-hmm. hearing God, but we still dib- dibble and dabble into the everyday sins in our flesh. Of course, that's never going to stop. You're going to sin to you the day you die. Mm. That's why you have a relationship. That's why relationship is so important. We so focused on the rules. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't do this. Don't. What did God tell you to do? That's true. Focus on what God is telling you. Every sin is not going to stop today. I'm mm-hmm. going to be a sinner till the day I die. I know for sure God told me this year, you need to read. Mm. I know for sure God told me you need to be celibate. God ain't told me to stop drinking yet. When Mm. God tells me that, I'm going to, maybe that's not my vice. Mm. Maybe that's not pulling me away from him. But having sex is. Mm. Not being knowledgeable is. So so whatever God is telling you to do is what you need to focus on and not focus on everybody else's sin and and even your sin. Because we're going to sin until the day we die. That is never going to change. Ever. Ever. So what is God specifically telling you to do? When you get that nudge, A, lay off of the strip club. A, stop overeating. That's gluttony. A, you know, stop, whatever. Whatever God is telling you to do. That's why relationship is so, it's it's for you. That's why relationship is more important to me than Mm -hmm. religion. Because when I have a relationship with God, I can hear what God is telling me to do. And and you not being obedient to that to me is, is... the, the most, biggest sin. The bi- not the biggest sin, but not being obedient to God's voice is like, all right, all right, all right, come on. I done, I've been telling you this for years. I've been telling you this. You I, only, know. I only ask that because I feel like sometimes we can use it to our own benefit, right? And I'm just, again, I try to speak a lot of times, me, because I don't want people to get offended or whatever. You feel me? So, like, I feel like sometimes 
we can be ignoring God's voice intentionally because we aren't ready or because we're just, I feel like sometimes you can. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like we just make That's excuses. exactly back to what I said. What is God telling you to do? If you're ignoring his voice and he is blatantly, blatantly telling you to do something, that's on you, my brother. Mm. You're ignoring him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you have to have a relationship with him so you can hear that. And that looks different for everybody. Mm. You have to seek him. No, nah, I feel you. I, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just this religion should be tricky because it's like we know things. We know what's, we can we could tell what's right, what's right from wrong, mm-hmm. right? We could tell from what's right from wrong. So like, yeah, God could say, you know, like we could hear God say don't do things, but it's other things we know we shouldn't be doing. Correct. So it's like I agree with that. It, it, I'm it, not disagreeing with you. No, nah, for sure. I'm not, no, 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 yeah. no. I'm just saying. I just feel like sometimes we do use that as a crutch. Like because if we know we're not supposed to do one thing, but we just going to your example, like we know we're not supposed to steal. Right, thou shalt mm-hmm, not steal. Mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. we know we're not supposed to steal, mm-hmm. but God is telling me, um, I don't know, walk a straight line or some shit. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. I'm walking my straight line, but I'm also going to steal. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like uh, it's, it's just tricky. Like yeah. it's like I don't know. that's why relationship is so important. I'm gonna keep going back to that. When you have a relationship with him, with him, it's easier to maneuver through life. Mm. You have more conviction. Not having conviction, conviction is very scary. Why you said that? Ooh, if somebody don't have conviction, I can't fuck with you. What does that mean? Put it in layman's terms. This is a simple example. Littering. Mm. Just the do do do. Cert- doing certain things that you just don't feel bad about it. Stealing. Mm. At least if you're convicted, meaning you feel bad, you have a conviction over you, over your spirit that is like, I shouldn't have done that. That that is a safer place to be than doing stuff frivolously sin- sinning and not feeling bad. That is a scary place to be. No conviction is very, very scary. You just mm-hmm. going through life frivolously doing things and not having in, any conviction that is making you feel bad about your sin. So what if you have conviction, but you still do it? I, th- I think that's where that's that's a personal issue. Mm. That's a personal issue. That's like not listening to your parents. Mm. Either you're going to listen, you know, follow the rules or you're not. That's personal. And mm. that goes back to Relationship. relationship. I like that. Damn. <laughs> it's like a relationship with a person. I don't want to hurt you. I love you. Mm. I, I don't want to hurt you. I know your boundaries. Your boundaries. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't do this. I'm going to try to respect your boundaries because I love you. It's just like with God. Mm. The closer you are to him and the more you water your relationship, you're going to start to respect his boundaries more. Mm. Damn. That's fire. I fuck with that. Yo, speaking about relationship, how do you, f- like, your relationship with, like, I don't know, your your social like your influencer, mm-hmm. your celebrity. Mm-hmm. But you also talk about so much of being yourself. Yeah. Do you feel any type of duty to put out the right message to people? Because, like, a lot of people listen to you. And I feel like it's different from you being a celebrity than me being a regular guy, right? Yeah. Like, I think it's a, it's a different duty that we owe the world. Do you feel like that? My duty is not to put out a right message, not to put out a wrong message. It's to put out a truthful message. Mm. Whatever the truth is. Just like... We can go back to the abortion analogy. Some people think it's right. Some people think it's wrong. I don't care what your opinion on is it. Oh, I mean, on it is. It was my truth. Mm. This is the truth. My my duty is not to lie. My du- duty is not to sugarcoat. My duty is to tell you my truth and my journey and how I learned from those things and my testimony on my life. My duty isn't to be perfect. Mm. My duty isn't to put out a, a good message. My duty is to tell the truth. In that moment, right, telling the truth, how do we, how do we meet in the middle, right? Because your truth, a truth can be it's per- perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Your truth can be yours and my truth can be mine, mm-hmm. right? So, like, going back to the abortion, right? The, I'm pro-choice for sure. The only reason I say it should be some things triggered because I've been through things as well, yeah, right? Yeah, and I know how it yeah. makes me feel, and uh-huh. I have to go to therapy for that, and uh-huh. I speak about that, right? Uh-huh. And it brings tears to my eyes, like, it brings tears to your eyes. How do we meet in the middle, Right? How do we? How do we? When you say something that somebody misconstrued or somebody don't mm-hmm. understand, instead of counseling you, how do we meet in the middle and say, "Okay, that's your truth." Right? I understand that could hurt you, but mm-hmm. I think having two- conversations like this, having open dialogue without people getting offended and oh, it has to be a debate. I'm right, you're wrong. People want to be right so bad. You don't mm. have to be right. Relax, relax. We're humans. We think different. We're different. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. Let's have dialogue. You know what I'm saying? And I think there's a way. Well, in in my life, to tell the truth, whether the truth is, okay, I did this, you know, I shot 10 people. 
yeah, I shot them. Okay, that can also be the truth like this. Yes, I did kill 10 people, and I, I'm, I'm not saying that's right. Mm. There's a, a way to express the truth. You know what I'm saying? I think that is my duty to tell my truth, tell my tell my journey, and tell how tell how I have grown and evolved from where I was and where God has brought me from. Mm. Do you think that's your purpose, too? Absolutely. I feel like people have multiple purposes. I feel like in this season right now, my purpose is my podcast. My purpose is showing the world my relationship with my best friend of 20 years, how we water romantic relationships, but we don't water platonic relationships. Mm. We don't water friendships with our, our, our friends. We so focus on a man or a female or somebody to romantically fulfill us. And you haven't worked on a relationship with your mom. Mm. <laughs> you haven't worked on a relationship with your children. You haven't worked on a relationship with your best friend. So I think platonic relationships are just as important as romantic relationships. I think that is a part of my purpose, showing the world that you can have that and it does exist. I think um, people have multiple purposes in different chapters of their life. So, mm. yeah, I do think that is a part of my purpose, my testimony, sharing my story and allowing people to be like, wow, I went through that, or wow, I would have never known that about her, or because she did it, I can do it. That's all of all of us. We all mm. have a story, and we can all share it and allow people to feel like they're not alone. I think mm. that's one of the biggest thing with, things with humans. People don't want to feel alone, bro. It's 8 billion people in this world, and you still have moments where you feel by yourself. Mm, mm, so mm. being able to share your testimony and share your story with people lets them know they're not going through things by themselves. No, I think that's a, 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 a huge purpose, and yeah. I think that's a part of my purpose, too. That's why I try to get on this platform, and I try to be as vulnerable as possible, yeah. right? And that's why I say, it's not saying that I'm, I don't I don't care about being canceled. Yeah. It's just my truth is my truth, and I know somebody, if I'm if, if I'm one person that believes in it, it's somebody that's somewhere that's somebody believing it. Somebody believes in it. And I know yeah. I'm, not, I'm not one alone, but I know that I'm not giving off something that's poison. Right, because yeah. let's be honest, th- these platforms is a good is a is a is a blessing and a curse with these platforms, yeah. right? We get a pl- we get a platform, we can we can flourish and everybody can see us, but guess what? Guess who else got a platform? Yeah, that nigga who's doing foul shit, yeah. the rapists, yeah. the fucking like yeah. those guys People are that are promoting evil, exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I wanted to direct it to purpose because, yeah. but that's why I'm not scared about being canceled because I understand where I'm coming from, mm. right? And I know I know my purpose on this earth, mm. right? It's somebody else that's hurting that's going through that too. Yeah, let's bring it up. Good what, for you. It's about what, what makes you human. That's yeah. what these conversations yeah. are about. Yeah, being relatable and just having open dialogue and open discussion. Like I said, it's not right. It's not wrong. I mean, some things are just blatantly like, this is not right. But just being able to talk. Facts. Do you think that, do you foresee that at all in your lifetime? See just what? being able to talk through our differences? If we had to talk about the the macro Microcosm. I don't know if that's a word, but you say like the world. Yeah, the oh world. Do you ever, do you do you foresee that in your lifetime? Us being able to t- say something, make a mistake, apologize, and talk through it, and come to an understanding. Hopefully, but I do you hope see so. it? I see anything. I believe anything can happen mm. with you know, but I don't. It's it's very very hard. Mm. It's very very hard, especially with this this little device right here. This this camera, social media. Everybody has a platform. It could be a random person in their basement they can build a platform you know what i'm saying so everybody has an opinion on certain things but hopefully we get to that point no nah, I, I i say that because like i look at things like Kyrie Irving, right kanye mm-hmm. west well let's say Kyrie, right kanye got a couple things so let's say kanye yeah. Kyrie, right you know he posts some things and people try to counsel him they say it's anti-semitic but that's clearly not what he was trying to go that's not the route he was trying to go he wasn't trying to hurt people yeah, feelings, right? i think that's a lot in what people say like i i can relate to that <laughs> like you say I love oranges. So you hate fucking bananas, bitch? Mm. You're a fucking banana hater? Mm-hmm. I just said I liked oranges. God damn. That's all I said. I like oranges and I like grapes. Bitch, I'm allergic to bananas. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, it's like, I didn't even say that. Oh, I love black men. So white men ain't shit. Love is love. <laughs> Humans are human. Respect every human. I, my preference is black men. Mm. So you hate Asians? Fuck. Nah, facts. It's like, you know what I'm saying? So I get I get it, but I just think, I don't know. I don't know. The world is fucked up and people like us have to continuously use our platform and promote as much light as we can. Mm, that's and that's why I asked about that we don't go back into it, but I asked that because I feel like shit, maybe yeah, we could do things in the dark, right? But speaking on certain things or letting people know it does kind of help other people do the same thing, mm-hmm. right? Somebody might have a issue or a misunderstanding. Now yeah. they can be like, damn, 
it's not that shit. Yeah. Be Simone did it. Let me do it. Yeah. You get me? and that's it, it. Doesn't come from a, you know, a lot of people have these conversations try to clickbait or it doesn't come from that. It really comes from a, a soul thing, mm-hmm. right? Like, cause it just is what it is. But whatever. Yeah. I feel like that's the missing key, and a lot of times, a lot of people don't share our perspectives, right? Like, for example, a lot of it's not a lot of Be Simones. Mm-hmm. It's only one, and shit. The people, the things that you're doing, is not a lot of people who do that. Yeah. Right. So when you're saying things. They can't relate. They they don't understand. So when you yeah. say, I like oranges, because you've been in so many different rooms and you're educated, there is some people that's just not educated. They, they're not able to differentiate, I love oranges from, I just love oranges. I don't hate everything else. Right, right, right. And I think that's what I promote um, with Megan on Know For Sure. Like, going on your own journey. Are The more people go on their own individual journey through life, healing, growing, evolving, not brushing trauma under the rug, not that you'll be more understanding and you'll be more open and you won't be so defensive. Mm. And take you, you, The more you grow personally, the more it'll be amazing people on the fucking internet. Mm. Like, you have to grow individually. This shit is not helping you grow. This shit is a distraction. Mm. You have to turn this off and go on your own spiritual journey. That's why... And, and not even... It ain't, yes, spiritual. God needs to be in it, in the foundation of it. But I'm saying, like, everything. Shit you've been burying for years. Shit that you don't even know why you going off on people. What's up? What's up? Bitch, all I said was good morning. Mm. That is stemming from something. And the more you ignore that, the more you're taking out your anger on other people and the internet and not being able to have open conversation. So I think that's what we promote on our on the Know For Sure podcast. Healing, growing, evolving, and your truth. Going on your own journey. Fix you before you try to fix the world. That's so true. And as, as cliche as it is, it's just, it's just so real because I was about to ask you, do you think is? It's harder to be in a relationship as you get older, right? I think I don't think so. So all right, I think I asked that because a lot of us aren't healing. Yeah. Right. So I think I would say yeah. Uh, I'm like because, for me, I'm getting better. Exactly. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like whoever get the 33 year old beat, the 35 year old beat, the 40, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm getting. They gonna get I'm the doing, fine wine. I'm doing the work. Right. You have to do the work, and yeah. I don't have all the answers. I don't. I'm trying stuff, y'all. Yes, I did therapy for a year. Then I stopped. I haven't done therapy at all this year. Mm. That's something I got to get back in. You know, I'm, I'm. It's trial and error. I've, I've done the meditation. Then I fell off. Like it's, it's learning. It's relearning and building in new habits into your everyday life. But that's why I think relationships don't work a lot of times, right? Because we aren't doing the work. Yeah, we want to yeah, say yeah. we're doing the work, yeah. and what happens is you have two people. You got two hurt individuals coming in to to make one. Yep. Right, but yep. when you don't do the work, yep. it's like like you say. We hear this, this Expe- saying. Expecting somebody else to fill you up. Right. Yeah. And then we hear this saying all the time. Let's just get into it like this. Uh, I don't know, this angry black woman. Right? Mm-hmm. Think about it. Be Simone Beauty. J20. J-A-Y-2-0. 20% off. Be Simone Beauty.com. Like that. We have that. <laughs> it was a quick commercial. Um, we we have that. Um, it was flawless, too. But <laughs> we hear this angry black woman. Right? But let's be real. Black women have came at the... The, bo- the black women have been on the to- bottom of the totem pole forever, right? Because it was always black black people as a whole on the bottom of the totem pole. But in that, the black woman came under mm-hmm. the black man, mm-hmm. right? So we have years of trauma and... That we have to heal from. Right. That we have to grow, grow from. Exactly. And, and when you don't heal, that's when we have the defensiveness, right? But even with men. Right, we think that black men, we think that things should go our way. But when we don't heal and we're not learning things, when things don't go our way, we don't know how to react mm-hmm. to that. We don't know how to, we don't even know how to respond mm-hmm. to that. So that's so why. What I, are ways for black men to heal? You feel like, like if a black man is watching this and he wants to heal, what are some tools or ways that you have healed? Therapy. I'm still healing. Healing is like it's not it's a never destination. Ending. I know, I, I know. But I'm saying starting your journey. <clears throat> um, therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, accountability. It's two, right? Um. And this one goes with accountability, just being able to look yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Right? Acceptance. Yeah. Right? So I understand that I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. I understand I'm going to make mistakes along the way, along my journey. But it's not, I'm not okay with that being that I'm using as a crutch or an excuse, but I'm okay with dealing with whatever comes with it if, that, if, that's, what it, Got you. if that's what it takes for me to learn. Mm-hmm. Right? So I might do something and I might, I don't know, God forbid, I might lose my job or whatever. Right? But I have to look at myself in the mirror and say, what did I do? To be able to lose my job, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. What wasn't I? What were some things that the I could have been doing better? Making, yeah. Accountability, right? Um, I think that's being healing. Acceptance, because 
understanding that we going in a relationship, we're two different individuals. You're not always going to think, you're not always going to be on the same page as I For am. For sure. And in those moments, understanding that it's going to be frustrating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm okay with being frustrated, but don't allow my feelings to dictate my actions. That's yeah. when you go wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as men, we got to understand that, okay, I'm upset with this. Oh, I like that. Don't allow take a, feelings to dictate your actions. Yeah. When wow. I, no, understanding. First, I understand I'm triggered. Let me take a step back. Let me deal with myself and let Figure me represent. why. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe something I, that happened when you was five. You get what I'm saying? Like... The root of things, figuring out the root of things is a big one for me. Which, in my cell, I was going to ask, like, how do you... Yeah, a big one. I, like I said, therapy, I got to get back in. I just texted my friend today, was like, where'd you find your therapist? I'm looking for a new therapist. I haven't been in therapy this year, so mm. about 10 months. Wasn't it so good, though, when you was going? I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It mm. was literally venting and crying, and even on good days. Some days I had good, good therapy sessions. I wasn't always talking about problems and stuff, you know, Talking to a stranger that is not biased, like, <laughs> not judging you, doesn't even know who I am, like, just talking, inventing, and, you know, figuring shit out. What was the biggest learning experience that you got from your therapist that you didn't even know you had the issue with? Mm. There, there was one situation she helped me through, and I was overthinking. What was it? No, I can't say that. No. You didn't um, give me I nothing. I was like... overthinking. I ain't gave you nothing. I mean, like. Nigga, we just talked about Danny Lay on your platform. Relax. I'm not dapping you. You ain't gonna give me some love. I mean, that's that's that's, that's we big. We talked about a lot of that's shit. That's big. That's big. Come on, man. Give me I'm some just damn saying, love, man. We ain't talked about nothing. You no, been we did. We did. No, no, shit no, no, out no, of yeah, me yeah. left and right. No, Relax. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, damn. Can I apologize? Anyways, to, to answer your question, so we can get to the the answer of it, and all not right. the you trying to pick all the shit. Let's just get to the meat and potatoes. What? Um, she made me realize, like, she listed out the the options. Like, well, if this happens, I'm like, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? And she, like, broke it down to the point where if any of it happened, it's going to be okay. Like, mm-hmm. overthinking. Your mind can be your biggest downfall because you make up all this shit in your mind, make up all this damn um, what ifs. And most of the time, what you're scared of never happens anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's just like... I don't know, just taking that moment to realize, even if it does happen, so the fuck what? Like, mm. you know, the, if the worst did happen, you're okay. You're still okay. Like, you can fight through it. You can work through it. So I think that's that's a big thing, like changing your mindset when it comes to fear. And that's that's what you were, if, if somebody was saying why therapy, you would take that and give it to them? That was one situation. No, I think therapy is healing. I think therapy unlocks a lot of things. You talk yourself to the light sometimes like my you know they're they're not giving you much advice they're not talking back a lot a lot you're really talking and explaining and you realize like wow this is where it helps you unlock where your pain and your trauma and certain things are coming from Mm. i think it answers a lot of questions you just have to start you have to start the journey and every therapist you're not gonna like y'all so if you try one and don't like them go to the next one don't think that that's therapy in its entirety yeah that's one person yeah (laughs) that's one person that's one experience i think the most pivotal part for me in therapy was again i'll give you the example my therapist asked me how i felt about my mom's like my relationship with moms Mm -hmm. And I never was asked that question. Mm-hmm. And I always be like, I love my mom. Yeah, she we did, good, whatever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but I do. Like, I feel like everything she did made me who I am. So the things that she didn't do, I appreciate so much because it taught me so much, yeah. right? And that's my answer all the time because I love my moms. Yeah. I don't feel bad. Like, she did what she had to do. She did the best of her yeah. ability. But my therapist was like, nah, how does it make you feel? And I never was asked that question. Yep. And I'm like, yep. damn. I mean, I do wish my mom was at my football games. Yep, yep. But like, you get to the root of it. Damn, like, like, I do wish my mom was around more, right? Yeah. And it's like that moment when I cried because I was like, wow, like this whole time I've been putting my feelings on a back burner yeah. to kind of protect my mom's what I thought yeah. was. But I can have my own I can have my own feelings yeah. and still understand yeah. both parties, right? I think that's what therapy did yeah. for me. And at that moment, I was like, damn. This is for me. Yeah, good, like, good. You start to unlock stuff. Yeah. You learn stuff about yourself that you didn't even know. Some things you didn't even know needed to be fixed. Like, mm. why am I like this? Why am I like that? You start to talk it out and really understand why you are the way you are. Mm, mm. So I think that's healthy. Everybody get therapy. Speaking of, since you, you, you did give me some things, I thank you. I had one question for you, right? You being a businesswoman. hmm You work hard. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if people thought about it like this, but the first thing I thought about, 
first of all, let's paint it like this. Shout out to um, Wildin' Out, Nick Cannon, huge platform put mm-hmm. you on. I love right? Nick. I want to ask you how you felt, though. You working hard for a business, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody asks you to be not there and it being so easy to just say, okay, she don't have to be there. How do you? How did that make you feel for the business, not yeah, even the person? Yeah, we talked about it off camera. It's not. It's not a big deal. Okay. We, handled, we hashed it out off camera. But how did that make you feel, though? I was okay. Damn. Mm-hmm. You ain't think like, damn, bro. Like, how can y'all just? No, that was that's my answer. I was okay. 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 Mm-hmm. That's your answer. So we it was some feelings though. We don't have to talk about the feelings, but no. it was. Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, you should you you better. I would be hurt. I ain't gonna lie. I'd be like, damn, like mm-hmm. that shit hurt. Yeah. Have you ever had Have you ever had a situation like that where you you put some some energy into a business and they just cut ties with you? Cause I feel like businesses um, could do that. Have I? No. Mm-hmm. Damn. So how do you feel when you see people do that? Like for example, Kanye West, right? He go oh, crazy. Like- no, not even Kanye, cause Kanye is going crazy. Let's say Kyrie Irving, because I feel like his wasn't I as don't crazy. Know. Yeah, I'm not. Into People that. Nike stripping up, like Nike say, okay, cool, we take out, we we, we don't want anything to do with you mm-hmm. because of a mistake he made. Mm-hmm. How, how as a creative, as somebody who create things and and I mean uh, the overall picture. I don't know the details of the Kyrie Irving and the Kanye and all that. I'm not going into depth about that, but I think overall, as is duality. The 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 Nike don't give a fuck about these people. <laughs> they care about money in their brand, right? They don't have a re- personal relationship with these people. And yeah, it's fucked up. They're a human. You get what I'm saying? Like, yes, it's fucked up. Do you think? But knowing that, do you think more of us should have more ownership in what we have and the things See, we that's own? In general, that's across the board. Ownership protects you across the board. Mm. Ownership in land. Ownership in your business. Ownership in. Every single aspect of your of your company, you know what I'm saying? Ownership is gold. Mm. So, what are some of the things that you're doing to be to put yourself more in a CEO position, to be yeah. owner of everything? I bought my first property. I'm building my real estate portfolio. I have property I just bought and invested in in Louisiana. I have a property coming up here um, that I'm getting for this family. I'm helping. Um, also, just like. Create Don't Wait. That comes from my girl, Ernestine Johnson Morrison. We just made our own movie. We put up all our own yeah, money. Yeah, I saw that. That shit was funny. We, we put our own money up. Like, we didn't wait for the Tyler Perry's or the Hollywoods or to give us an opportunity. It's like, if you believe you should be a lead in a movie, write, get your script. Write your movie. Put up your own money. You want everybody else to invest in you. You don't want to invest in yourself. So, uh, we did that. And I think going going to that saying, like EJ says, create, don't wait. That's just the best way to have ownership. Create mm-hmm. your own platform. What you're doing, what I'm doing, like having your podcast, having your own production company, having your own lip gloss line. Like there's no, I own that shit, you know? So creating things that you 100% have your hand in. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think, you know, it's crazy because we think to talk about the, the cliche people ask me, how do I, how do I like just start? Right, as cliche as it sounds, mm-hmm. but like r- literally what you said, create, don't wait. Because mm-hmm. what happens is when you put yourself in positions like that, people see it, right? So mm-hmm. y'all just made a movie, y'all put it out, mm-hmm. big production. So what's going to happen is somebody going to see that and be like, oh, shit. Yep. Go to schemequeens.com, y'all. Mm-hmm. You want to you keep going? Hey, commercial, <laughs> quick commercial, go ahead. Schemequeens.com. Schemequeens. You want? It's out. Okay. You want to give Tyler's plot? What else? Keep going. No, I'm not. Okay, cool. You got to go check it out. It's so good. All right, bet. So um, I feel like when you put things in position, posi- put yourself in position mm-hmm. to be able to be your own boss, other people want to help you. Right? Yeah, yeah, when you yeah. need people, it's like, nah, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I feel like that's it. Too. Yeah. Or people tie you, they see your vision. You know, they believe in what you're doing. They're going to, you know, sow a seed into that. No, nah, facts, because they can see it. Yeah, I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Thank you. This I, is fun. Nah, thank you. I, um, you got my support and everything that you're doing, man. Like, I can see the growth. Yeah, I did want to ask you, do you, you coming up close to some, let's say we had a double XL cover, right? If you and the comedians or whatever. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel, I ask Justice, do you ever um have any, like, survivor's remorse? What's that? Like, survivor's remorse is kind of almost feeling, like, bad for the people that's not, that came up with you or besides you, mm-hmm. that's not exactly in a position you in or, or not having as much success as you. I had that at the beginning a little bit, but it's mm. like everybody has to make their own choices. You can't. What's the old saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you, you can't, can't make it drink. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> like you know, you try to put help people, give them opportunity, put them on, but they at the end of the day, they make their own decisions. You know, 
if it's in you, if you a dog, you a dog. You gonna make mm. it to the top regardless. It ain't nothing I can do or cannot do to make to, you be a dog. Yeah, <laughs> if you gonna you gotta eat like you know. So, um, it's not in everybody, and it's not for everybody. But, um, I felt like that at the beginning. I don't feel like that now. I mm. feel like God called me to do this, and that's just this is just what comes with it. I actually yeah. about this. I actually a lot of what people want to know. This is for me. Yeah. How does it feel to like see Megan flourishing, bro? Uh, like, I'm how so does that? I'm so proud f- of her, bro. Isn't that like I'm so proud of Megan? Like she is super open with her personality. She has bipolar depression. She was diagnosed with it. Um, she fights a lot to be happy. She mm. fights a lot for her peace. She fights a lot for her relationship with God. It's because of her. I'm the closest to God I've ever been. She's mm. taught me so much. And to see her, we were having conversations outside of the camera. And we're like, I'm like, bro, people need to hear this. People need to hear this. And mm. that's when she she didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. She did not want to be in front of the camera. She worked for me for three years behind the scenes. She's just an angel. She's a gem. She's my best friend of 20 years. And um, Megan, I love you. And I know y'all love her too. Right. But having her in front of the camera has saved people's lives. Mm. And we we will never even know the magnitude and the capacity of the lives we're touching because you don't know. There's millions of people seeing this stuff. There's one thing that we say can change somebody's life forever, can mm. make have them make a life-altering decision. You know what I'm saying? So she's just a beautiful person, man. She's the, she's the person in my life that I've been the most intentional with loving, the most intentional with our relationship and she has taught me a lot about love and mm. relationships. So I think she well, I know for sure I know for sure she is definitely a part of my purpose and nice. what God has called me to do. I ask you that because like like you said, right? You know they love her, right? And it, you can see it. It's like it's kind of like yeah. everybody says positive, like all the comments is shit, like comments is crazy. But one thing that's certain that's that's consistent is people going to suffer how much they love Megan. Like, yeah, that's the one thing yeah, that's consistent. She's special. And I say that to say, like, she's that special. that gotta feel good to be like, you felt that before anybody seen yeah, it. Like I told y'all, hello, duh. Right. I get to feel that on a personal level. Like it's it's something that I can't explain. Mm, like, mm, mm. God is really in our relationship and in our friendship. And he how, called us to do this together. How fortunate it is to have a friend like that, Man. Bro. And, and y'all can have it, too. The more you change and the more you evolve and the more you grow, you're attracting people that are like-minded and that are aligned with you and your purpose. So you can't just be like, I want a good friend. I want to do You got to be that. Mm, mm, Everything mm. you're asking for, you have to become, you know, and we're, we're very aligned. God is good, man, for sure. Yeah. Nah, thanks again. Uh, B. Simone, if you want to, uh, you gave yourself the intro. That shit was crazy. You got outro? You can teach me the way. You, you... Thank you guys for tuning in to the <laughs> Jade Hill podcast. Don't forget to go to bsimonebeauty.com and get your lip gloss. I gave y'all a promo code. It is J-A-Y-2-0. That's J-A-Y-2-0. That means you get 20% off. What? Go get the lip gloss. We got bomb stuff on there. The holidays are coming up. So make sure you shop for your significant other, for your friends, for yourself. Be SimoneBeauty.com and go to SchemeQueens.com. If you would love to see a, a, a bomb ass movie that I produce with three other of my friends, Miss Jackie O, Ernestine Johnson Morrison, and Brie Renee. I would never be. And watch the No For Sure podcast because, baby, we are the number one podcast in the world. We are a billion-dollar brand. We are a billion-dollar podcast. And our first live show Mm. is in Atlanta at Center Stage on February 22nd, 2023. If you're not in Atlanta, you might want to fly in. You don't want to miss it. You like podcasting, man? How was that for you, bro? I love it. It's fire? It's so fun. It's fire. I think it's... But I feel like you've blessed. You're fortunate. You ain't had to come in... You got like a team, right? <laughs> Talk what? to me. This the this the I'm spot. Like, this is where I'm from. But nigga, no. I had the to come team, in this the motherfucker. The production changes daily, weekly. Fuck. I ain't that's fr- Warren used to help us. Tell like it, it's very difficult. We travel. We shoot in L. A. We shoot in New York. We pull up on people. Like we do have a. Don't get me wrong. I have a core team. Like J and F. We just did an episode with them. Jazz and Frankie, Ashley, Shekinah. Make we have our core family. But there's always gonna be other people you have to outsource and hire. That shit mm. never stops. That probably Building gotta a team be, is hard. <laughs> that probably gotta be the And we're all women of color. The most number one annoying part of like just doing this. Like even bro, I had to get all this shit dolo. I had yeah. every time I had to record by myself. What? Oh yeah. My God. Yeah. That. And the money, like we started our Patreon, um, and people are like, oh, now y'all charging for content. How much do y'all think it takes to produce one episode? 
thousands of dollars. Like, it, yeah, we have to make money. We have to, we can't, we don't have the money to just, we have, it's, it's our job. Thankfully, our job and our purpose aligns. That's the goal, to walk in your purpose and have your career be, you know, aligned with your purpose. But thank God it aligns. But yes, podcasting is our job. People are insane. People think, <laughs> look, 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 right? Let's be real. People think we just get on here and talk on camera, right? Let's break that down. Let's if break- they could see what I'm looking at, there is... Three men in headphones, one got on headphones, one standing looking at the camera, the other one's sitting down, the other one's pressing buttons. There's one, two, three cameras here, two laptops, there's a keyboard, like there's a whole, there is, this costs money, y'all, to produce. Let's break it down, right? Your shit look good, right? Yeah. To be on camera, right, looking good, costs makeup, one, some effort to get your hair Hair, done, right? The camera. The camera itself costs a lot of money to make to make sure it look good. Something that you' going to be tuned into and, and keep your attention, right? Yeah. The lighting, perfect lighting. We have to have great lighting. That is so many layers to this. Yeah. It ain't just oh we get on camera we talking like people mm-hmm. are people think like mm-hmm. and th- you know what I hate. Shit, since we here, fuck it, let's have fun. <laughs> you know what I hate, bro? When like my friends be like, yo, can I just put me on the podcast? Bro, don't make it awkward, bro. Like, don't make me say no, bro. Like, come on, you see I'm work. Just be my friend, be a supporter. Yeah, support me. Like, come on, I hate that. Yeah. It'd be like random yeah. people, to, like not random, but like friends that don't do like, and it's okay. Like just regular friends. I mean, but that's how we are. Like on our platform, we're like, I don't care if you have a million followers. I don't care if you have five followers. Can you have a conversation? We want to give people valuable conversation, different outlooks, and different perspectives. If you could talk, come on over, come on a podcast, but don't be on here. Promoting your mixtape, nigga. Like, we we gonna get to that, too. Like, all right, promote the mixtape, whatever, anything you gotta say, any shout-outs, whatever, but have something to say. <laughs> Niggas think we can just get on here and just be like... Have something to say. <laughs> you know. Yo, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank be Simone. Yeah, this make- was fun. This is a good interview. I appreciate that, man. Make sure y'all uh, tune in to Know For Sure. Like she said, biggest podcast. Oh, shit, it's crazy. Number I mean... one podcast in the world. Mm-hmm. We are gonna be selling out the Staples Center. We are gonna be selling out Barclays. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Mm-mm-mm. I see it. I see it. No, for sure. But that's the beautiful thing about manifesting. Nobody else has to see it but you. I know somebody out there has a vision. I know you have a vision. I know you feel it. Everybody, God didn't give them the vision. He gave it to you. Stop being mad that people don't see it. It ain't for them to see. Mm. You be the leader. You you. Play out the vision that God gave you, okay? Stop worrying about everybody else. He didn't give them the vision. He gave it to you. So I believe in you. You got to believe in yourself. And yeah, number one podcast in the world. No, for sure. Be Simone. J-Hill Thank Podcast. You, J-Hill. This was great. Appreciate it. It's-